As the spiritual leader of A Place of Faith, Reverend Linda brings you a new lesson each week. Join us today as we share the path of spiritual enlightenment and evolution of consciousness with you. Our intention is to share content with you that encourages interest and expands the horizons of your journey. Our mission is to create a safe place to explore and develop personal, spiritual connections and relationships. Our vision is the joyous, loving acceptance of all people as an expression of divine spirit in the evolution of consciousness to oneness. All are welcome here. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today at A Place of Faith. Today we are celebrating Palm Sunday, but before we do that, please join me in prayer. Let's just take a breath together and turn within. Father, Mother, God, we rejoice in this holy season, in this time of learning, loving, living, and growing together. God, be present with us in this message, in the ears and the eyes of all who hear and see it. Thank you, God. Amen. <sighs> Amen. So, today is Palm Sunday. In a lot of churches, Palm Sunday is celebrated by laying palms out along the aisles so you can experience walking on palm fronts just like Jesus did when he came into Jerusalem. Palm Sunday and Jesus coming into Jerusalem is actually spoken of in all four of the Gospels of the Christ. I wanted to look at specifically the book of John chapter 12, 14 and 15, where they talk about Jesus going out and finding a small donkey to ride as he goes into Jerusalem. And why was that important? Well, it was prophesied that Zion would know her king because the king would ride in on a small donkey or a donkey colt. And Jesus was very careful to be in accord with that prophecy. That's kind of what I want to talk about today is when we assume the position, the beliefs, the demeanor that we believe people expect us to have. Jesus very much did that for his trip into Jerusalem. He met all of the qualifications to be recognized as the King of the Jews coming into Jerusalem. And oh, there was so much fanfare. People lined the streets, they cheered, they were so happy that finally the Jews were going to be released from the torment that they had gone through. In their mind, in their belief, Jesus would smite the Romans and, and just get revenge against all who had ever stood against the Jewish people, the chosen people of God. We know that isn't exactly what happened. And Jesus never told them that he hadn't come to kill anyone. They thought he had come to wreak vengeance upon their enemies. But Jesus came to change the hearts of both the Jews and the Romans and all people. Jesus came to bring love, not vengeance. And a lot of people were not very happy about that, not very excited about that. And we know how that story ends. Today, though, I want to talk about us, you and I. When we go into a situation, oftentimes we kind of assume that mantle. We might wear a tie or a dress or put on makeup or not talk about that, or maybe we're watching our language. We're working hard to meet what we believe 
the people around us expect us to do and say and be. That can feel a little out of integrity. It can almost feel like a lie. Why would Jesus do this if it wasn't the truth? Well, we know in the story of Jesus, the reason he did this was so they would know that he was, in fact, the, the prophesied Savior of the people. Even though he knew what was going to happen, he knew he was not the Savior they expected. He also knew he was exactly what not only they needed, but all of us needed. All of the world needed Jesus to carry the Christ and to be our way shower and to bring us that love. He wouldn't have been able to do that as well if he hadn't played the role, ridden that little donkey, gone in and let everyone cheer for him and, and wave because he truly was the Savior, even though he wasn't what they expected. For so many of us, we walk into a situation, perhaps we get a brand new job, right? oh, we're the boss of this company, and we've never really worked at that company. And when we walk in, people expect us to be bossy, be the boss, look the part, be what they want. But we may know that the best way to lead people is to understand them. And even though we have the role of boss and we can dress the part, we might spend time working in each person's department, in each person's position, to really better understand what it is they're doing. If we want them to accept us as we do that, we kind of have to play that role that they expect us to. Put on that mantle and, and ride the little donkey. Even though we may feel a little bit out of integrity, what we're actually doing is establishing ourselves so that we're able to be the messenger we are meant to be, that we are able to do the job that we have been asked to do. Kind of a little side note, you know those palm fronds that they put down in the aisle and along the pews in the church are the very same ones that they pick up and they dry them out and then they burn them and it's the burnings from those palms that we get on our forehead on Ash Wednesday if we're a part of that and the reason behind that is it's a continuation it's a rebirth it's a reusing of what has been put down there before I thought that was a beautiful tradition, and I wanted to share it with you. So today, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, let us celebrate that even though the language may be different, the expectations may be different, it really isn't our job to tell people the way we see it, the way we want it. We walk our walk, and we live the truth that we know. And we trust that God will use us in any way God needs us. Thank you for joining us today at A Place of Faith. Before I let Jody close us out with the beautiful song he has for us, I want you to remember that you matter. You are sacred. And you are so very loved. Namaste. A lot of us grew up believing At any moment we could lose it all at the drop of a hat, God might turn his back and move on. 
A lot of us feel like we blew it Thinking that we're just too far gone But I want you to know That there's still hope for you now And no matter what you've done You can't erase His love Nothing can change it You're not separated No matter what There's never been a better time to get on it Never been a better time to get clean So come as you are Run to the cross and be free No matter what you've done You can't erase His love Nothing can change it you're not separated no matter where you run he's always holding on you're still a daughter you're still a son no matter what you're still a daughter you're still a son no matter what. Follow us on Facebook for daily meditations, prayers, and all of our videos. If you know of anyone anywhere who is struggling with spirituality or who wants a spiritual community, please share our videos. Commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing are also ways to support us and help us grow. Reverend Linda is available by phone, Facebook Messenger, or Zoom conference for spiritual and ministerial counseling, guidance, and direction on a love offering basis. She can be reached through a place of faith at SohoMail.com or through Unity Church of El Cajon. A place of faith is sponsored by Unity Church of El Cajon at 311 Highland Avenue, El Cajon, California, 92020. You can send donations there. Just put APOF on the check, or you can also contact us through our website at www.unityofelcajon.org and make your donations on the website. Thank you for your support.